Hi there and welcome to Talk ETFs, ETF.com's weekly video series. My name is Sumi Roy and I'm Senior Analyst for ETF.com. This week I'm talking with John Cartsonis, Managing Partner at Breakwave Advisors. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to have you here. So John, can we start off by talking about what's going on in the Red Sea? I'm seeing all of these headlines about attacks on ships and things like that. What has people so worried? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously a very fluid situation, but um, you're talking about one of the most uh, important um, waterways in the world. There, there, there are, you know, there are a couple of them. The other one is the Panama Canal, obviously the Singapore Straits, uh, but definitely the Red Sea and the Suez Canal is uh, is a very important waterway for shipping. Um, you know, if you look at about ten to twelve percent of the global trade goes through the Suez Canal. So it's a significant part of uh, what's, moving, what's moved around uh, the world uh, by boats, by ships. Um, any disruption there, and uh, it, ha it will have a significant knock-on effect in a lot of things that we do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in the economies, in the global economy. You won't feel it immediately. It takes time, obviously, for all these things to develop. But if you remember a few years back, we had this uh, big uh, container ship stuck in, uh, in the Suez Canal. And everybody was panicking about how we're going to get our stuff uh, for Christmas and so on. So, you know, shipping is very important uh, when it comes to global trade. It doesn't get its fair share only when you have uh, events like that. So what's happening now is obviously um, you have a situation that uh, some ships that try to go through the Red Sea uh, to reach the Suez Canal and go to the Mediterranean are being attacked uh, by the rebels in uh, Yemen. So, and that basically has caused a number of shipping companies to, to decide to divert the ships away from that region and take a longer route in order to reach the destination. Um, that's what's happening right now. Um, and we see how this is going to develop. And John, what's the worst case scenario? Are these ships going to be diverted to longer routes? And on the other hand, what's the best case scenario? Could things go back to normal pretty quickly? Yeah, well, the best case scenario is uh, is easy to understand. Uh, the situation reverts back to to what it was before. Um, it could be a lot of different ways that can happen. Obviously, the military got get involved, or um, you know, the whole situation in the Middle East. Uh, who knows? You know, there's a truce, there is some kind of a deal, and the whole situation de-escalates. Uh, obviously, uh, that's anybody's guess, and we all read the news uh, on a daily basis. The worst case scenario um, is much more complicated. The complete, a complete blockage of the Suez Canal for a prolonged period of time. And the Suez Canal is a little bit north of where we're talking about that all the attacks are happening. But uh, basically, if you shut down that strait, you basically shut down the Suez Canal. Um, so a prolonged um, disruption in that part of the world um, could mean a lot of things. First of all, it could uh, mean higher shipping rates across the board, whether that's a container ship, and these are the ships that move the consumer goods, or oil tankers that uh, obviously transport oil, or dry bulk that transport the grains, for example, food for, for the people around the world, um, let alone iron ore and, and uh, coal. So all these are very important commodities and goods that suddenly, first of all, you need to pay more to move them, to, 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 get, uh, to, to get the delivery of these goods. Second, uh, you might have a total um, recalibration of the global trade because if it costs too much to buy, for example, um, you know, grain from the Black Sea, you might decide to buy grains from uh, the U.S., for example, or from South America. You know, there is a lot of like call it um, uh, different prices that you you look, and obviously people will go for the cheapest one. So you have a, a recalibration of the global trade. All this um, means definitely higher prices. So it certainly sounds like shipping companies might benefit while consumers might be hurt. Am I hearing that right? Um, that's, um, you know, if the situation escalates further, shipping companies will benefit. Um, consumers, that will be passed eventually to the consumer. And, you know, again, think about what happened with the supply chain situation back in uh, after COVID, right? I mean, one of the reasons why you had this uh, increase in inflation had to do with the disruption in the supply chain for different users, of course. It's not the same. Uh, it's not apples to apples here. 
But again, in these situations, you don't know what the worst case scenario might look like. Again, you're talking about a very important um, passage for a lot of ships and a lot of goods that have been shipped around the world. John, you have two ETFs kind of focused on this space. B Dry is one and B Wet is the other. And they perform quite differently. B Dry has absolutely skyrocketed recently, while B Wet has been much more flat. But then again, B Wet is doing better on a year to date basis. What explains the difference in these returns? So, you know, when people think about shipping, um, the thing is one thing, but again, you have three different distinct segments. Uh, a ship can move only a specific uh, type of cargo. So dry bulk is involved in transportation of uh, bulk commodities. And the main commodities there is iron ore, which is the material that uh, you use to make steel. Coal, which is basically what um, a lot of economies burn to generate an energy. And grains, which is um, food, uh, would be corn, wheat, soybeans, and so on. Then you have uh, the oil tankers that we all know that they transport oil around the world. So Be Dry is focused on the dry bulk segment and Be Wet is focused on the wet materials oil. And uh, again, they have different fundamentals and different drivers. So talk about Be Dry, indeed it had a very strong performance and talking about what can happen on the, on the Suez Canal, one of the reasons why Be Dry has done very well is because the other major canal in the world, the Panama Canal, has been having issues for six or nine months now. Uh, reason being is not geopolitics, there is no war there, but basically is weather. It has been very dry weather, very low levels of water in, or in and around the canal, and that has caused major delays in the ships that try to transit from the Pacific to the Atlantic and vice versa. And that's one of the reasons why the market has been strong, because it has tightened the supply of ships. There are less ships available to load. And that means if the demand is steady or even higher, rates move higher. And I think that has happened in, uh, you know, in, in the last uh, three or four months and has caused basically the uh, strong performance uh, of B-Dry. B-Wet is the other thing, is oil. You don't have uh, really such a big... Um, uh, influence of the Panama Canal, but the Suez Canal actually is more important for the tankers, uh, the way that dry bulk is for, uh, I mean, the Panama Canal is for dry bulk. So you can see uh, what can potentially happen um, down the road on the in, in, in oil tanker rates. And Big Wet is very levered to the oil tanker rates, of course. And of course, Big Dry will also benefit to some extent. But these are the, the things that you, sh you should focus on when events affect shipping. These are the real, these are the real deals, like shipping rates. Uh, both of these funds invest directly into, into shipping rates, shipping futures. So they don't hold equities. They don't hold like, uh, uh, they, they directly are involved in the real shipping markets, which is shipping rates. Finally, before I let you go, John, I want to ask you, are these trading ETFs or is there a long-term case to be made for holding them? Because whenever people think about futures and ETFs, they think about Contango and things like that. How does all that play into it? Well, shipping is a very volatile, um, is a very volatile market, and it's not for everyone. It's um, a significant um, risk involved. Both of these ETFs are on the top of the most volatile ETFs today in the market. Um, I would say top five. And obviously, that means that um, these are trading instruments. Now, how long? I mean, is anybody's guess, but this, this is not a buy and hold um, sector by any chance. But I mean, you can make a significant amount of money in the short term, or of course, again, the risk is there that uh, it could go the other way around. Um, so uh, during obviously periods of heightened geopolitical risk, they tend to do well. And, you know, during periods of more normal uh, circumstances, um, you know, they will perform in line with the industry. But again, I would say that uh, obviously people have to, to understand that the, you know, there is significant volatility involved on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, but, uh, you know, when there is volatility, there is strong returns. Fantastic. Well, John, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me.